Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Let the blind say, I can see what the Lord has done in me. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Let the blind say, I can see what the Lord has done in me. I'm Canon Lisa and John and I welcome you into my study for this morning's service. A special welcome if you've come on from the nine o'clock service at St James today where people have gathered to celebrate the Holy Communion through the Book of Common Prayer. And also thank you if you filled out the survey form in the e-news last week which is helping us determine how to open other services. Now, today in the church calendar is Disability Awareness Sunday and it's also Sea Sunday in which we think about seafarers. But it also happens to be the 25th anniversary of the genocide in Srebrenica in Bosnia. And so our opening prayer will honour them. O oh God of truth and justice, you remember today the consequences of hatred between peoples and ask you to draw close to those left behind when their loved ones were killed. Teach your world, Lord, to live for a world where differences are respected and valued and fear and vengeance is a thing of the distant past. Amen. Amen. Now let's join together in singing our opening hymn which is led for us by the Clark's Choral Group. All my hope on God is founded. Deep is wisdom passing forth 
shall not fall, we've just sung, and yet we do fall so often. And in our reading in Matthew 13 today, Jesus speaks about seed falling on different kinds of ground and effectively invites us to consider what kind of ground we are. The reading will be read by Kaveh in Farsi and then Hannah in English. متا باب سیزده آیه یک تا نو هیجده تا بیست و سه همان روز عیسی از خانه بیرون آمد و کنار دریا بنشست اما چنان جماعت بزرگی او را احاطه کردند که سوار قایق شد و بنشست در حالی که مردم در ساحل ساده بودند سپس بسیار چیزها با مسئله برایشان بیان کرد و گفت روزی برزگری برای بزرفشانی بیرون رفت چون بزر می پاشید برخی در راه افتاد و پرندگان آمدن آنها را خوردند برخی دیگر بر زمین سنگلاخ افتاد که خاک چندانی نداشت پس زود سب شد چرا که خاک کم امق بود اما چون خورشید برآمد بس... بسوخت و چون ریشه نداشت خشکید برخی میان خارها افتاد و خارها نمو کردند آنها را خفه کرد اما بقیه بزرها بر زمین بر زمین نیکو افتاد و بار آورد بعضی صد برابر بعضی شست و بعضی سی هر که گوش دارد بشنود پس شما معنی مثل, ب... مثل بردگر را بشنوید هنگامی که کسی کلام پادشاهی آسمان را میشنود اما آن را درک نمی کند آن شریر می آید و آنچه را در دل او کاشته شده می رو باید. این همان بذری است که در راه کاشته شد و اما بذری که بر زمین سنگلاخ افتاد کسی است که کلام را می و بی درنگ آن را با شادی می پذیرد. اما چون در خود ریشه ندارد تنها اندک زمانی دوام می آورد وقتی به سبب کلام سخنی یا آزاری به بروز می کند در دم می افتد. بعضی که در میان خارها کاشته شد کسی است که کلام را میشنود اما نگرانی های این دنیا فریبندگی ثروت آن را خفه می کند و بی سمر می سازد اما بعضی که در نیکو کاشته شد کسی است که کلام را میشنود و آن را میفهمد و بارو شده بارور شد صد شست یا سی برابر سمر می آورد Today's reading is taken from Matthew 13 verses 1 to 9 and 18 to 23 the parable of the sower. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they didn't have much soil, But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no roots, they withered away. Other seeds fell amongst thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. 
let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but only endures for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown amongst thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, and in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. Thank you, Kava and Hannah. I'm now delighted that Mandy Mullins has prepared a homily on the parable, which we will hear after we've sung with Lewis and Kat, a chorus that John and I really like. Praise is rising, and it's much easier to sing standing up. Eyes are turning to you We turn to you Hope is stirring Hearts are yearning for you We long for you Cause when we see you find strength to face the day. In your presence all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, Hosanna, come have your way among us, we welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Hear the sound of hearts returning to you, we turn to you. When we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all. When we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you 
Hosanna. You are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, Hosanna. Come have your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Come have your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Come have your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Sowing seeds is exciting, isn't it? I recently sowed grass seeds in a part of my small front garden that was previously covered with stones. When seeds started sprouting, I was elated. Prior to that, though, I'd seen pretty little birds nibbling seeds. So inevitably, there were small patches that needed a second seeding. I've also recently planted flowers. Most have thrived, but in a rocky area where it was only possible to put a little soil, Things started well, but now they've virtually fizzled out because the soil's too shallow. I should have read this passage before I did the work. Jesus' words are always helpful, in this case not only spiritually, but also practically. He explains step by step what will happen to seeds sown on paths, in rocky areas, in thorny, weedy areas, and in good soil. It all makes perfect practical sense, and gardening manuals might well offer the same advice. Yet, how much more does Jesus tell us? Whoever has ears, let them hear. This is key. Jesus is thinking of hearing on another level, though. How often do we hear things which go in one ear and out the other? Increasingly with age, I find. How much more Jesus deserves? We need to hear deep within ourselves, not just superficially. His words deserve more than a cursory, hmm, that makes sense. They deserve deep hearing, which reaches our hearts and souls and truly enters inside our very beings. Then we can grow, then we can flourish, then we can be fruitful. That is really what this passage is all about. We're all part of the Great Commission. As Jesus taught of the love of the Father through parables, we are all commissioned to speak of Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit, that some may hear in the deep way Jesus means and that the number of Christian brothers and sisters may increase, prosper and flourish. We all know that not everybody has the gift of evangelism, but we can all be kind, be generous, be helpful. Actions can impact as much as fine oratory. We need to acknowledge our faith though, not just to ourselves, but more widely. Not everybody will be receptive. Some people are hard and tough, with hard shells like the path. Some are shallow, like the rocky ground. They might be excited initially, and then very soon go off the boil. Others are too wrapped up in otherworldly things, money, fame, image, reputation, enjoyment, or just mundane day-to-day -day worries and work. Their weeds, if you like. The ones we can truly reach are receptive. They're the good soil. Their hearts and minds are open and they will hear as Jesus hears, deeply, and they will be impacted. All need the saving grace of Jesus. He offers his saving grace now as he did then. Not everyone heard then. Not everyone hears now. If your words fall on deaf ears, do not despair. The greatest sower on earth loves us enough to commission us 
he commissions us to sow seeds. With practice and attention, we may come to recognise who is receptive. But ultimately, we are only the foot soldiers, the servants of our Lord, sowing seeds as he taught us, so that others might come into his care. We may never know the outcome. We simply have to have faith. One of our congregation, Vicky Long, gave me a lovely gift of a book called Devotions from the Garden. I'd like to finish with this short prayer from it about sowing seeds. Lord Jesus, thank you for reminding me that I sow seeds, but you tend to them. I will not always know or understand the outcome of my sowing, but not knowing is part of your plan. Strengthen me, I ask, in the role of the sower, and keep me ever mindful that you are the gardener. Amen. Thank you so much. And now let's turn to prayer with John. Dear Father God, it is so easy as we look around us to think that the world is full of illness, hatred, war and general unhappiness with a way of life depicted in the news at the moment. But it's better to look into the light rather than concentrate on the darkness and we bring these prayers to you in the spirit of the sower that sowed seeds in your name to bring your light to the world. We pray for the worldwide Church of Christ. Despite persecution in some areas of the world, the Church continues to grow and we give particular thanks that we have been able to give sanctuary to our fellow Farsi-speaking Christians here in Didsbury. We give thanks for the reopening of our church buildings for prayer and reflection, and the care and dedication of those in control to ensure the safety and long-term continuity of our provision post-COVID. Dear Father, we pray for the discernment to carry on with our inclusion work and to move from acceptance to full immersion into the benefits that come from valuing all your children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Father, we pray for your creation. We are so grateful that it can show regeneration and come back from tragedies of the past, both man-made and natural. We thank you for our mission partners who plant seeds of hope in places that experience difficulties. In particular today, we pray for Potter's Village in Uganda, as they help to protect the babies and children that Jesus values so much. Dear Father, we pray that you give us all the desire to help your world regrow after the damage done by fossil fuels and indiscriminate plundering of the world's resources. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our Queen and all those in authority around the world. We pray that all world leaders learn from the seeds that have been sown in Scotland, Germany and New Zealand, where a gentler and more compassionate style of leadership has enabled quick recovery from the virus. Dear Father, we pray that compassion, inclusion and a desire to see ideas through to completion influences all world leaders as they strive to recover from the human and financial consequences of COVID-19. Let the seeds of compassion shown by some nations be planted across the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our local community, both in Didsbury and across the city of Manchester. We are so lucky to live in such a vital and lively area. Your son was a healer, and it is a matter of joy that Manchester is at the centre of proton beam therapy for the treatment of cancer, helping the seeds of healing to grow. Dear Father, we pray that you help and support our local people, services, and the councillors that oversee them, so that all the seeds of goodness thrive within our community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves and in particular for those in our community that are suffering from body and mind. Dear Father, we pray that our National Health Service is quickly restored to its normal working and that the pains of people are remembered quickly and effectively. Please help those with mental health issues that are struggling with the speed of our world and the extra stresses that are showing themselves at this time. We pray that those not feeling well recover and can plant their own seeds of goodness and be productive for members of our society in whatever way that is. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, dear Father, we pray for our children and young jobless people. Please see them through the difficulties they face and help them find a pathway through education and work that allows them to fulfil their God-given potential. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. It is important not to neglect prayer. Many of us have learned new things during the relative stillness of lockdown and I hope we can treasure what we've learned in these weeks that have just gone. Why not take a moment later today with a pen and paper to write down what you feel God has been saying to you about himself or about yourself. Next we're going to hear Omid read the Lord's Prayer in Farsi and then Jim in English with Sally signing. Ey pedar ma ke dar asmani naam to muqaddas bad padshahi to biayad irade to chenan ke dar asman anjam mi shavad bar zamin niz be anjam rasad naan rozane ma ra emruz be ma ata farma va qarz hay ma ra bebakhsh chenan ke ma niz qarz daran khod ra mebakhshim va ma ra dar azmayesh mayavar balke az an sharir rahayi mande zira padshahi va qudrat va jalal ta abad az an tost Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those that sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours for ever and ever amen a few notices before we have our final hymn please keep your eye on the e news for details of how to register for free tickets to the walk in services that we will be starting up soon and are doing they are made necessary by the need for social distancing so that we can keep everyone safe Please help us financially if you can by hitting the donate button on the website or using the contactless machine in St James. And please consider popping along to St James between 12 and 2 in the middle of the week during the weekdays, even if it's only to say thank you to the team of volunteers who have been helping us open up for private prayer. Finally, if you would like to join us for coffee after the service, there should be a Zoom link on the home page of our website. Please do that. And keep your pictures coming in and let us know if you'd like to contribute to our services. Thank you for those who've contributed today. And again to the clerks for our final hymn, Breathe on Me, Breath of God.
uh, we will use the one that was in the e-news this week. Divine Sower, scattering seed, never hoarding, wasting life, or oh, so the world thinks. Give us the depth to receive the gift so freely given and the maturity to revel in love's abundant, reckless growth through Jesus Christ, the grain of life. Amen. Now you might like to stand for the blessing. May the peace of God keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Isn't it good to be as one Living in perfect harmony Sharing the good things God has done, God has done Oh, isn't it good to be as one Living in perfect harmony Sharing the good things God has done God has done Oh, isn't it good to be 